do is based on the facts and the facts only. Alright? So based on the fact that the probationary hospital police director did give a direct, uh, th- uh, direct order to supervision and to the officer that was located at Park Avenue 8 not to let the off, not to let the uh, 201 officer come inside and park in his assigned uh, employees paid parking lot for which he paid for services or paid for the privilege to do so uh, with no cause of reason now we're going to go to the next level of this not only did, did he do that said actions caused the officer to be late for duty okay or for roll call but yet and still we're going to go to the next level where that same, very same probationary hospital police director took and used that lateness against the officer to bring him up on charges for time and attendance or time and leave so his actions in doing so will constitute violation of U.S. Code subsection um, U.S. Code 42 subsection 12203 that's subsection 12203 where they are prohibited against retaliation or coercion or coercion and retaliation the key fact of this fact of it is the probationary hospital police director is did take an oath of office okay and his actions was in violation of the law under his discrimination so we're gonna go down to right here on the color of law the appearance okay the mere appearance and the substance or, 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 or that uh, is the legal right he had no legal right and then we're gonna go down to on the color of office okay this un what you say is unjust unjustly done his actions were unjustly done and the employer didn't stop it under their own employees corporate compliance policy such actions was in violation of the employees corporate compliance policy so based on that we only use this against them like I said use what they use against you back against them all right do your homework and I'm out back and you know how we gonna do this based on the facts and the facts only all right based on the fact that the facilities labor relations department uh basically held a meeting uh f- for t- actions of for time and attendance against the officer said the, the, the key thing is the officer said that these this was an act of retaliation that was brought against him by the department's hosp- probationary hospital police director due to the fact that the officer filed a, a complaint with the uh, facility's EEO official. Now, the act of retaliation will constitute violation of whistleblower's uh, protection. Okay? Now, once the officer identified that he filed a complaint with the facility's EEO to the labor relations specialist, the labor relations specialist is supposed to cease any actions. Any act to continue will constitute retaliation. And it would, under retaliation, we got down here where it says interference, okay, which you're interfering with the investigation. And then the officer telling you, okay, and then the labor relations specialist say, well, if you don't sign this document, that would constitute um, intimidation under threat and coercion. Okay? Like I said, we already got the fact of what was done at the facility. But they always pushing it along, like, you know, as far as the machine. So, since they're pushing it along, we got to hold them accountable under color of authority. Okay? And then color of law. Okay? And then the color of office. 
based on the fact that she took over office for the employer and for the city in New York. Uh, any un, un, what's that? Unjustly action done. This would be unjustly action. Why? Because under, under civil service law, section seventy-five B, under the whistleblowers, once it, once the officer filed a complaint, you wasn't supposed to take any adverse actions. Okay. If the EEO said they that uh, has a document that she set up a meeting for April sixth. How are you having this in, this meeting on March 31st? Come to an understanding. There's a breach in procedure there. Said breach in procedure brings about a breach of contract. And on that, we'll hold you under this U.S. Code uh, subsection, U.S. Code 42, subsection 12203. Do your homework. I'm back. Let's do this. Okay. Based on the facts and the facts only, we're going to use this to go after the employer's labor relations de- department uh, director. Key here is let's stick to the facts. The officer did file a complaint with the facility's EEO, all right, a violation of the corporate compliance policy by the probationary hospital police director. I said actions of using this motor vehicle in a threatening manner towards the officer, putting them in fear of intimate danger. Okay. Uh, the next thing is said action to do so will constitute a violation of the employer's corporate compliance policy. Um, under threat and coercion. Okay. If he in fact he threatened, and then the coercion would kick in when he went up to the officer and, and said, What are you doing here? And then use his powers and authority to retaliate against the officer forbidding him to park in said area where the officer had a signed contract agreement. Let's just move forward. The way this kicks in is the mere fact that the labor relations director took the officer to Fort Erector City uh, Arbitration and in pursuit of taking the officer's job. Okay? Okay, bringing them up on fraudulent charges. All the charges are basically fraudulent. <laughs> and you still use your authority. So since you use your authority, we're going to hold you to your authority under color of authority. And then we're going to hit you with color of law. And then the, un- the color of law is basically, you know, deal. Uh, any unjust, any unjustly thing that you did. We're gonna hold you to that. Then we're gonna go to well, no, we're gonna we're gonna go to call of office with the unjustly done. And the mere fact is the fact you brought the officer there, knowing that the officer filed complaint. So under civil service law section seventy five B, which is a whistleblower, you're not supposed to take any adverse actions at all, at all. So that's why we gotta hold you accountable to. Your authority, your abuse of your authority, your violation of your corporate compliance policy, all right, by a crime of omission, which you were supposed to cease and you failed to do. Like I said, you got to use what they use against you back against them to capture them in their game, all right? Do your homework, and I'm out. Back. Let's do this once again, once again. Based on the facts and the facts only. Okay, in this situation, we're going to go at the facilities, facilities, uh, appointing officer. Okay, under the organization, they are delegated these powers as appointing officer. Right? So that means the human resources officer. Okay? I'm supposed to be familiar with civil service law and business laws under employment. So we're just going to go to the facts of all the illegal activity that the Labor Relations Department did. Even to the fact that that same uh, 
human resources officer had a meeting with the union in reference to what was going on or how the probationary hospital police director was violating the employer's corporate compliance policy by uh, abuse of his authority and also the acts of violation of certain laws uh, penal law vehicle traffic law etc etc we're going to go to the key when the labor relations took the officer to 40 record to arbitration court and then we're going to bring it back to the fact that the human resources uh, appointing officer for the organization how's you going to sign off on a termination a uh, 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 termination document with these fraudulent charges said action to do so will fall under this title 18 U.S. Code 242 deprivation of a right or privileges and the color of law and the color of law so we're gonna go down to with color of your authority since you were an officer for the employer, the appointing officer, delegated appointing officer for the employer. Then we also gonna go down to the color of law. Okay, what you thought was right and it actually wasn't right and didn't have a legal right to be used. Then we're gonna go down to color of office in your office what was that it's an act that's unjustly done like i said use what they use against you back against them all right do your homework out. i'm back let's get this you know how we do we're gonna go to the facts and the facts only like i said you gotta use what they use back against them as they try to use it against you so right there, there's the uh, personal rules and regulations, right? All right, so we're gonna go down there, it says appointing officer, right? So the, pre- the president of the corporation, uh, senior vice president for the network of the uh, hub, uh, healthcare facility administration, right? So we're gonna go down to the point where it says they have the responsibilities and who they have delegated the powers Appointed employees, all right, and appoint authority. So, based on the fact that you have the power as the as the authority, you're gonna we're gonna go to this right here. We're gonna, we're gonna use this right here because of the fact that the officer was a civil servant uh, employee. In order to, 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 to uh, terminate. Spend any civil servant, you got to use section 75. So, section 75, all right, civil service law, not some stuff you make up, civil service law. Then, if the officer reported the probation and hospital police officer for violation of the corporate compliance policy and violation of laws, and it automatically kicked in the whistleblower because he retaliated against the officer, then uh, he's covered under civil service law section 75B. And that, with that, you can't take no adverse actions. Stated so in that law, Civil Service Law, Section 75B, says once he made the complaint, you can't take no adverse actions. All right. So, on that note, you did take actions, right, to cover up because so many of the supervisions uh, or supervisors did violate rules, regulations, and laws by writing fraudulent documents. So to cover it up, keep them from getting hit, you did wrongfully terminate that officer, didn't you, right? So that would be, you didn't give him a right. You, 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 you basically forfeited his right of civil service. Oh, section 75B, so we're gonna go to this. Depriving of a right or of rights under color of law. That would be that uh, section 242 of title 18, okay? Makes it a crime for a person to take action under color of any law to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution and all laws of the United States. 
any questions, do your homework. I'm back. Let's do this. You know how we do. You know how I do. We stick to the facts and only the facts. So, based on the fact that all the parties that was involved are public servants, right? And they all took an oath of office and their actions was under the oath of office. That's the key, all right? We're gonna go into the fact that they deceptive practices of, how would you say, filing fraudulent documents on the record with false written statement, all right? Violation by the judge of Canons 2, violation by the law, the, the uh, lawyers of uh, Canons 9, um, based on the fact of the acts of ultra virus, where they went beyond their corporate powers, okay, where they went beyond their authority, where they breached their contract, where they violated their corporate compliance policies of their employers. Each and every last one of them works for a corporation. Each and every last one of them has a corporate compliance policy for those corporations, those said corporations. Each and every last one of them violated their corporate compliance, um, uh, their employer's corporate compliance policy for actions of, let's, 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 let's go with a, a 105.0100, which is conspiracy. Yeah, it's all conspiracy because you're all filed fraudulent documents, which is subsection 17530 on the record with false written statement. Okay, you breached your duty by a crime of omission, which brings in this right off top. Okay, the privatization of a right or privilege under color of law based on your actions. The officer, like I said, once again, was a civil servant officer. You have to follow civil service law section 75B. Once um, the officer put, put that into play, you can't take no adverse actions. None whatsoever. So basically everything was supposed to have been halted. But you went ahead with it. You went ahead and did what you want to do because you are the machine. As a machine, we can work together. He doesn't know. Anybody can read. So let's hold you accountable to this right here. Where it says section 242 under of Title IV, uh, 18. Um, makes it a crime for a person acting under color of any law to willfully deprive a person of a right. As an employee, you have a right. As a civil servant employee, you have a right. Or privileges or laws of the United States. 